much, uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, the former President of the former Prime Minister of Guinea. I will, uh, that's also a very encouraging word in terms of how we are ready to collectively make that necessary change by using uh, South Sudan as an example. And one of the things you said there, I think, which I would like to uh, really commend and support, and which we might all be thinking is that when we say Africa is a continent, maybe like you said, let's say where Africa is a country. We are one people. And in that process, we can have greater progress in our development. Uh, may I now call on His Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of uh, his Excellency Professor Muhammadu M. Oka, the new permanent representative of the government of Geneva, who has also been playing a very, very important role in the drive of this organization, the Africa's Scholars Global Network. Over to you, <coughs> Ambassador. Uh, good evening, um, Ambassador Oka. Uh, brothers, I'm not sure whether there are sisters in the audience, but they're brothers and sisters for this very... Uh, we, have, we have them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for this very wonderful uh, engagement, uh, I want to convey my most sincere greetings to His Excellency, Professor General James Wani Iga and his delegation colleague ministers for making the time from your very busy schedules for this very important engagement that I believe will be many more engagements as we lend our services through you to the peoples of South Sudan. Uh, I also want to thank our chairman, uh, Dr. Abdul Diwali Muhammad for his relentless and tireless efforts to ensure that Africa and certainly the South will not be a second fiddle. Um, I raised my hand earlier and put it down uh, after the very insightful uh, brilliant intervention of His Excellency, uh, the former Vice President or Prime Minister of Guinea, His Excellency, Dr. Kuyate. He could not have said it better um, to a point where I was not planning to say anything because he had just said the essence and the opportunity that is central to this great country, the Republic of South Sudan, as the country boldly chapped forward. Uh, I just wanted to add my, my voice to associate myself with his very important interventions, and I hope that we will all roll our sleeves to actualize them. Uh, I'm speaking from the vantage of, I was the third vice chancellor of the University of the Gambia, the first Gambian to actually provide leadership of that university. Um, I was a diasporan, I'm a Gambian, but grew up in the United States and was a professor at Howard, at George Washington University, at Rutgers, at American University, and returned to the continent as a diaspora to get engaged in the implementation of a world-class private university in Nigeria in the remote part of the country in the Northeastern Corridor in Adamawa State called Yola, where you have a lot of insecurity and insurgencies. But because of the importance and the commitment of the founders of that university, no insecurity uh, was taken as an impediment for us to sow the seeds of a high quality 
private university to complement and supplement public interventions. Uh, I'm also talking from the vantage that after my tenure as a vice chancellor, I was opportune to be engaged by the government of Azerbaijan in the Caspian Sea in Baku, where I helped found the School of Engineering and IT, as well as the Center for Data Science, and to strengthen high skill capacity for a country that depends hugely on oil and gas, but have the foresight to begin to rethink that dependency of that natural resource to create an alternative pathway for sustainability and survivability beyond the oil and gas that they are endowed with. And to ensure that the people, the human resources, specifically the youths, are equipped with emerging skills of the 21st century. So to hear His Excellency, uh, Dr. Kuyate, point out the importance and the centrality of education. I can't help giving that backdrop to be quiet. <laughs> uh, we are here to be of support, to lend our services uh, to the modest experiences and exposures that we were opportune to have in this effort led by uh, Dr. Diwali Mohammed. South Sudan have a huge opportunity in my mind to do education right. The education of yesteryears, the fundamentals are still essential and important, but yearns for huge disruptions to ensure that relevance and resilience and preparation of the future generation and youth around the skill sets that are required are in place. The beauty is there is not much legacy and rigidities that exist in the Republic of South Sudan as it relates to her ec ecosystem in education. So we have an opportunity to, to provide the leadership and the implementation and transformation harnessing the best thoughts and thinking of what the future of a university should look like, what the future of research should look like, the kinds of uh, learnings and learning engagements and knowledge assets that are requisite for a country that is emerging today to be part of the world, uh, uh, world countries and world institutions the preparation of the teachers or re-preparation of the teachers that are going to prepare the next generation of learners. Uh, so Professor Kuyate have said a lot there and I'm not going to belabor it, but I just wanted to add my voice that we are ready to work with your excellency and your team and also encourage other African diasporas or friends of Africa across the globe to do education and research right and align it and put it into the context to harness and optimize value for the natural resources and the creativity and the potential of the youths of the Republic of South Sudan. South Sudan have an opportunity to be a regional hub for knowledge assets and to harness digital transformation early on in everything that C does. And the digital transformation will generate huge economic value and wealth creation driven by the youth and women of the Republic of South Sudan and perhaps attracts the best minds across the continent, not only to generate employment and employability, but to generate wealth and use technology to improve the processes of government and the processes of economic engines 
across your country. Uh, we cannot overemphasize the importance of STEM and the importance of smart agriculture to remove the lack of interest of our youth, our most able in agriculture by harnessing the emerging technologies to make agriculture smart, attractive, and to use technology or adapt appropriate and frugal innovations around agriculture, around digital trade, around digitizing supply chains, both intra and inter and to interface with the global value chains so that small and medium sized businesses across South Sudan can scale and have the world market opportune to them. Uh, I will stop there and hope that this upcoming forum that will be hosted in Juba will attract the best of the best across the Republic of South Sudan and bring all actors and agents in the education continuum and ecosystem from pre-kindergarten to primary and secondary to university and tertiary institutions to have a serious dialogue and discourse with the aim of putting in place a high quality educational ecosystem that will attract the best and brightest of students and scholars across the globe to South Sudan. It's a huge opportunity and a privilege to be part of this very important discourse and engagement. And once again, I can thank Dr. Kuyate for his wonderful and brilliant intervention that sums it all and touches on the heart of what the AAS con under the leadership of Dr. Abdul Diwali Mohammed and all the team members and the board is ready to provide the requisite support to your excellency, Professor General James Wani Egan and your colleague ministers and the peoples of South Sudan. And everything that I hope we do moving forward will embrace the centrality of quality education, quality digital transformation and services and infrastructure, where we build the youth with the requisite competences. And also to ensure that across South Sudan, you have TIVET, TIVET, technical vocational and training institutions that are of the highest quality to attract the youths and prepare them for the world. Not only TIVET that relates to the electronics and the mechanical, but agro-TIVET institutions where you have TIVET, agro-TIVET campuses across that makes them attractive for the youths to be able to engage in smart agriculture and find attractive agriculture because it is key to wealth creation. Very important uh, to, heed, uh, to heed that. Um, I will stop here for now. Um, if anything, I am very, very excited with the commitment and for His Excellency Professor General James Wani Egan to carry all his colleagues, senior ministers, and those entrusted with investment to engage and interact with us to work and support the vision of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Sudan. I thank you for the opportunity and once again looking forward to substantive engagements. Your Excellencies, greetings from Geneva um, and looking forward to the engagements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. His Excellency, Professor Muhammad uh, the new permanent resident of the Gambia United Nations of Geneva. Uh, you said it all. And uh, as a very close contact with the United Nations Office of the South Operation and the South Center, we're very glad that uh, we're quite empowered, you know, by the experts, technocrats that are here today and also voicing 
their commitment towards what we plan together to do collectively in South Sudan. Uh, uh, and uh, believing that uh, with so much experience we have, let me bring in 